praise the lord dearly beloved sisters and brothers once again father is here greeting you all in the name of jesus we are on the 95th day of our bible pilgrimage we have reached book of joshua chapters 2 and 3 psalm number 53 and acts of the apostles chapter 6 so we have the second chapter of joshua in which the story of uh, rather the incident of uh, rahab the prostitute see rahab she had heard of the lord of israel and now when she got a chance she immediately confessed her faith and it not only saved her but the lives of all her family members praise the lord see how she pronounces and proclaims her faith i realize that the lord your god is god in heaven above and here on earth and that apart from him there is no god she proclaimed she confessed her faith about her st john chrysostom has written like this see in the uh, end of 4th century rahab is a prefigurement of the church see it's john chrysostom writing rahab is the prefigurement of the church which was at one time mixed up in the prostitution of the demons and which now accepts the spice of christ not the one sent by joshua but the apostles who were sent by jesus the true savior i learned she says that your god is up in heaven and down on the earth the jews received these things and did not safeguard them the church heard these things and preserved them therefore rahab the prefigurement of the church is worthy of all praise hallelujah also i found it uh, worth uh, you know uh, mentioning what cyril of jerusalem have uh, had spoken about uh, uh, rahab also in the 4th century some say i have committed fornication and adultery see cyril of jerusalem writes some say i have committed fornication and adultery i have defiled my body with every excess can there be salvation for me fix your eyes dear one upon rahab and look for salvation for yourself too observe how she was saved she said only this the lord your god is god in heaven above and on earth below your god she said for she did not dare call him her god because of her wantonness you know sinfulness and if you want scriptural testimony of her salvation you have it recorded in the psalms psalm 87 Uh, verse 4 speaks about uh, Rahab. I will think of Rahab. God says, I will remember Rahab. So, uh, Rahab, you know, she risks, uh, actually risked her life and uh, in order to hide and aid the Israelite spies and uh, even goes on to become a wife of one of them later, you know. and it is from her line that jesus christ will eventually come you know what a beautiful thing it is we cannot even imagine jesus in his genealogy has this harlot uh, this prostitute rahab's name hallelujah see rahab's mentioning uh, later in the genealogy of jesus is actually very significant by 
firstly because she so she she shows that you know women can be used as integral uh, pieces of uh, yahweh's plan also she you know confirms that not only that women can be used but sinful women can be used that is anyone and everyone can be used by the lord for his work for his plan in a male dominated culture especially one so focused on being holy and obedient to yahweh rahab is essentially the worst of the worst the least and the last and the lowest and it is for her line that jesus christ himself is born god's ways are really mysterious now we understand matthew chapter 21:31 21:31 jesus said truly i tell you the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of god ahead of you hallelujah so the message is never look down on anyone however sinful he or she may be and the second thing never think that you know uh, that anyone shall not be saved you know that person will not be saved never think of anyone that that person will be lost or will not be saved because heavenly father doesn't want even a single soul be lost so we can hope that's the hope of the church church never says that someone is in hell you know we proclaim church has proclaimed that many are in heaven they are the saints but church categorically has not said that someone has gone to hell because we do not know how god's ways are we trust in his mercy and his desire to save everyone so in ways you know known to him alone he may be reaching the merit of his passion and death to everyone praise the lord now we come to chapter 3 of book of joshua see one of the most momentous times in the history of israel because in their journey towards the promised land from egypt crossing the river jordan is the most crucial and also the final incident hallelujah so chapter 3 words one early in the morning joshua rose and set out from shittim with all the people of israel and they came to jordan so getting up early in the morning this theme is recurring several places in the bible before going for you know once you are going for some important thing um, it is necessary that you should get up early in the morning because that is the most conducive time of grace that is why for example we read in the bible like this psalm 53 in the morning o oh lord you will hear my voice in the morning i will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch in the morning so in the book of genesis chapter 19 verse 27 now abraham arose early in the morning and went to the place he had stood before the lord early in the morning and when god commanded abraham to offer isaac what he did chapter 22 of genesis verse 3 early the next morning abraham cut some wood for the sacrifice loaded his donkey and took isaac and two servants with him they started out for the place that god had told him about so early in the morning exodus chapter 8 verse 20 now the lord said to moses rise early in the morning and present yourself before pharaoh so several places we find 
early in the morning that's why we find uh, in the gospels jesus for example mark chapter 1 verse 35 in the early morning while it was still dark jesus got up left the house and went away to a secluded place and was praying there hallelujah so several places we find early in the morning then the second thing verse 5 joshua said to the people sanctify yourself sanctify yourself for tomorrow lord will do wonders among you sanctify yourself for tomorrow lord will do wonders among you so importance of sanctity because for the first time they are going to put their feet in the promised land after so many years 430 years they were in in uh, in egypt and afterwards 40 long years in the wilderness now this day they are going to enter what a beautiful sight it is then then what happens words 6 joshua said to the priest take up the ark of the covenant and pass on before the people and they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people words 8 and you shall command the priest who bear the ark of the covenant when you come to the brink of the waters of the jordan you shall stand still in the jordan verse 11 behold the ark of the covenant of the lord of all the earth is to pass over before you into the jordan verse 13 when the soles of the feet of the priest who bear the ark of the lord the lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the jordan the waters of jordan shall be stopped from flowing and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap what a beautiful thing the lord is doing for his people it touches our heart verse 17 and while all israel were passing over on dry ground the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the lord stood on dry ground in the midst of the jordan until all the nation finished passing over the jordan of oh, presence of the lord praise the lord dear ones the priests are interested with this great ministry so we find the priests who carried the ark of the covenant they led the israelites into the promised land the same way the christian priesthood today is entrusted with the mission of guiding and leading the nations of the world to the kingdom of god so they should walk in the presence of god ahead of the people leading them and here at the terrifying sight of water you know standing like a big wall the priest stood up courageously you know in the midst of this river so they kept standing until the last among the people crossed over those priests standing in the midst of river jordan they are actually the symbols of priestly intercessions helping the people amidst their difficulties in the battle for the kingdom of god remember moses stretching out his hands when joshua was in the battle we find in 17th chapter of book of exodus hallelujah so the priest who carry the lord's presence should be in the midst of the people their salvific presence should strengthen the people of god with hope with courage with zeal to and to, and to, they should be encouraged to to walk in the presence of the lord praise the lord that's the ministry of christian priesthood remember to pray for the priest okay hallelujah so we have psalm number 53 now psalm 53 and psalm 14 which we have already seen they are called twin psalms they are almost similar just one words maybe little differences there words 
if not they are almost the same so the the main message of the psalm is you know when you fail to surrender uh, yourself to the authority of god in your life or when you fail to surrender ownership to god when you fail to see his presence in the world in your life you enter into darkness you enter into foolishness in every aspect of your life so the first part uh is verses 1 to 3 that is the sad condition of the man who rejects god then the second part that is verses 4 to 6 is god's defense of his righteous people god will protect his people from the foolishness of the other type of people who reject god praise the lord so with that we we go ahead and uh, we enter into the acts of the apostles and here in this chapter of the acts we have the appointment of uh, deacons and the arrest of uh, stephen chapter 6 see satan's attack on the church came on many different uh, fronts he attempted many forms of uh, direct opposition and intimidation that we found uh, several times through the authorities they directly want to oppose and he tried to corrupt the church from within that is in chapter 5 with ananias and sapphira story we have seen so these strategies were all unsuccessful in stopping or slowing the work of the church many were again coming uh, to be believers now satan hoped to divide and conquer divide and rule you know by raising one group of christians against another that's what we find in this chapter chapter 6 so here chapter 6 verse 1 we find that there was all of a sudden some confusion some division the disciples were increasing in number the hellenist murmured against the hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution you know what is hellenist and the hebrews see the hebrews were those jews more inclined to embrace you know jewish culture and uh, they were mostly from judea see all are jews only but there are some jews who were in judea they were more strictly following jewish customs and the so called hellenist they were those jews more inclined to embrace greek culture because they were outside in different places in the roman empire so they were more uh, influenced by the greek culture and so mostly they were from different places you know jews in diaspora we can say so they were called hellenist ah uh, hallelujah actually speaking the accusation that their widows were neglected in the daily distribution of funds etc were a kind of you know manifestation of their own internal disagreement actually this people you know hebrews tended to regard hellenist as unspiritual people compromises with the greek culture and so on you know worldly culture they said so they they were the so called modernist meanwhile the hellenist regarded this hebrews as the so called holier than the attitude traditionalist extremist like so there was that uh, internal disagreement and from there only this problem was coming so when a problem came what apostles did how they solved the problem next sentence so the 12 apostles called the whole group of believers together and said it is not right for us to neglect preaching of god's word in order to handle finances so you choose seven men among you who are known to be full of holy spirit and wisdom we will put them in charge of this matter we ourselves then will give our full time to prayer and work of preaching see when there was a problem in the community they first checked themselves and found out the problem is with us we were slowly neglecting prayer and the word so they committed themselves into full time and they allowed seven people to be chosen by them 
and we will appoint them. See, the final decision is rested on the apostles and uh, we will commit ourselves into prayer, full-time prayer. So, problem is solved. Satan there also could not win, you know. Uh, so, he comes with the lies, the next pericope. With that, he got Stephen arrested and when he was arrested and the people were falsely accusing him, the last sentence, all those sitting in the council fixed their eyes on Stephen and so his face looked like the face of an angel when he was falsely accused. You know, he was at perfect peace. His perfect peace could not be taken away by the false accusations because of his trust in the Lord. He knew, you know, my life is safe with God. So he had no fear. That is the, you know, perfect discipleship. May Almighty God bless us all. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.